So I recently got in touch with HK Gaming to let them know that I'd like to review a Durgat Venus, but little did I know, they already had one for me in the mail. So I've been testing this keyboard for a while now and I can finally say that it will replace my daily driver, the Ant Pro 2. First time I come across a keyboard that has everything I want in the Ant Pro 2 and more. So let's check it out. As usual with Durgat keyboards, it comes in a nicely branded blue and black box. It's also really solid, so I wouldn't be worried about having the keyboard damaged during shipping. In it, you'll find the keyboard in a foam envelope under a plastic dust tray, and you also get two rubberized USB cables, one being Type-C on both hands and shorter, likely for a laptop setup, and a longer one with a Type-A connector on one hand. Then you also get a wire keycap spooler and a Velcro cable tie. This unit really falls under the high-end category of compact mechanical keyboards. You get a black aluminum case, so it has zero flex whatsoever. It has no adjustable height, but the default angle is standard, I'd say. And you get four rubber pads under it so that it doesn't move around. It will also be available in white in the near future, so that's definitely something to look for. At the back, you get a Type-C connector, which is great, although it's quite recessed, so you might not be able to fit any third-party USB cables in there. Just something to keep in mind. The keyboard also perfectly follows the NC standard. I have also been told by HK Gaming that European ISO layouts will be available in a few months. So no dedicated arrow keys, but that makes it really easy if you want to replace the keycap someday. Although, you might want to keep the included ones as they're pretty much what's best out there on pre-built keyboards. These are PBD and double shot, which means they will last a long time, the surface won't shine easily and the legends won't fade either. They're pretty thick too, at 1.3mm, and the legends don't have slits and closed shape characters, which is much harder to manufacture, but looks way better than the other way around. Speaking of the font, I think it looks nice, it's clean and simple. They feature a cherry profile, so they're pretty close to the standard OEM profile, just a tad shorter, and that's a profile that's usually appreciated by most people. Unless you want something really unique, I would stick with these keycaps for a while, as you'll have to pay quite a bit to get something remotely better. My unit came with cherry brown switches, but it will be offered with other switch options in the future from Kale and Gaterons, and the price will vary depending on that. If I recall correctly, the cheapest option will be with Gaterons, and prices will start at 100 bucks. They feel as expected, but I would love to try the Gateron Brown versions too, since they're a bit lighter, I bet they would feel great. Now as for the stabilizers, these are the best, on par with the ones I tried on the Drugod K320. The Hades 68 wasn't as great, but these are pretty much it. If you want the best stabilizers in a 60% pre-built keyboard, I would highly recommend this keyboard. They don't wobble at all, they sound really nice, keys don't rotate at all, and they go down perfectly straight even when hit from the sides. So, typing on this keyboard is quite a charm, these nice PBD keycaps with the Cherry profile are amazing, and the switches are great as expected from Cherry, but the stabilizers are really what makes this keyboard feel great. The aluminum plate sounds great too, it's definitely the best typing experience I've had on a 60% mechanical keyboard. In terms of look, this keyboard also offers RGB LEDs, you have a bunch of animations available on board, and these can be changed using function 2 and plus, and you can change the brightness and speed of animations with function 2 and WASD. Overall, they look great, colors are vibrant with that silver aluminum plate, and they reflect quite well. While you get a bunch of options on board, you will need the Hera compiler software to get full control on the RGB LEDs on this keyboard. You can store up to 5 lighting modes per profile, all of them being customizable quite in depth. You can go key by key or pick animations and select which colors you want to see. So quite complete, although the UI is not always that intuitive. 
In terms of key remapping, you don't have arrow keys set on additional layers by default. So I added WASD to the function one layer as arrow keys, being what I'm used to on my AND Pro 2. You get to set pretty much any basic key, but also multimedia controls and mouse functions. These can be quite useful. Apart from the default layer, you get three additional layers by holding function one or two, or both at the same time. So it's very nice and allows for all the keys you would need on a smaller form factor. And you're able to set up up to three different profiles like this with different layers and light settings on board. So the possibilities are definitely endless and you can even change the key combination to switch between profiles on board. You also get to record and set macros, which is always nice to see and can be useful for gaming. Finally, you get to remap the meaning of the three LED light indicators. By default, they indicate caps lock and if profile two or three is in use, but you get other lock indicators too. And before ending this video, you also get a tap feature similar to the AM Pro 2. By default, it's set to be activated when you hit function one and caps lock. And then the bottom right section of the keyboard acts as arrow keys when you only tap the keys instead of holding them down. While I'm not a fan of this method, some people really love their AND Pro 2 because of it, and it's nice to see they re-implemented this feature in here. So should you get this keyboard instead of the other options available? Not considering the price, I think it's one of the best 60% keyboards on the market right now, period. It has a great case and overall build quality. RGB LEDs and key remapping customizability is good enough for most people. The stabilizers are the best in that keyboard form factor. That alone plays a big role in my recommendation and you get a good selection of switches. Compared against the Ducky 1-2 Mini, I would say it's a better or equivalent keyboard on all aspects. The only improvement you get with the Ducky is the flip-out feet and they sell for a comparable price. Then compared against the AM Pro 2, you get a better case, better stabilizers, better keycaps. However, the AM Pro 2 has Bluetooth connectivity, the software is better built and works on more platforms, and it's cheaper for equivalent switch selections. Finally, compared against something like the GK61, you are mainly losing hot swap switch sockets and the much lower price, but all other aspects are better with the Durgat Venus keyboard. If you're on a budget or if you absolutely need Bluetooth, the AND Pro 2 is still a very good option, but otherwise I would rather recommend this keyboard for the better typing experience and sound, build quality and better keycaps out of the box. So this is it. I'm retiring my AND Pro 2 for this Durgat Venus. It took a while to dethrone the AND Pro 2 for what I wanted, but I'm getting a better typing experience without losing anything I care about. So. I'm making the switch. Hope this video helped you in any way to see if this keyboard is a fit for you. I'll have affiliate links down below as this keyboard gets rolled out around the world. I'll try to keep the links up to date with all the color and switch options as they get available. So thank you for watching. Make sure you leave a like if you did and if you didn't, just let me know why down below. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't already as I'll see you in the next video.